There's a reason for this. It is cheap, it is direct, and it produces results in terms of law and order, and in terms of the surveillance of the population to make sure they don't cause trouble. So if you are looking for a cheap system of government that delivers certain goods, surely we, should, we can't go for the parliamentary system. We could go for a modified version of a, of a monarchical system, and I have a rough outline which I wouldn't bore you with in a way in which we could implant that monarchical system into the Nigerian system. And it's not uh, also by accident that some emirs in the north have argued that if they were still in charge today, there will be no Boko Haram because they will have nipped it in the bud from day one through their surveillance system and their control of the, uh, of the population. And finally, one of the leading British African is Basil Davidson. Uh, in the book, Black Man's Burden, argued that in fact the British were wrong when they handed over power to the Western educated elite. They should have handed over power to the chiefs because the chiefs were the people who understood the population. And finally, when you go to Morocco, Morocco is the one North African country that has barely, that has weathered the Arab Spring fairly well. When you go to Swaziland, you have the monarchical systems that are functioning. So when you take all the criteria of effectiveness, of cheapness, of direct relationship to the mentality of the people, I think the monarchical system is better than the parliamentary one, uh, if uh, the logic of evidence has to be followed. So I don't think we can pass this motion if we compare it rigorously to that particular model of government. It is true, some can argue that the, parliament, the monarchical system is very undemocratic. They can also argue that it divides our people along ethnic and regional lines. But nobody can dispute that it's more efficient and cheaper, efficient in keeping law and order. One of our major challenges today is security. It's cheaper to operate is very familiar to our people, and you don't have to write copious constitutions with legal terms that nobody understands. This is something that we people who have lived with for generations. And therefore, the suggestion will be that the only deficit that the monarchical system has is its lack of democracy. But let's face it, which parliamentary system in Nigeria has been built on a democratic system in the 60s? So even the claims to democratic credentials may be questionable, and in that instance, maybe the balance of evidence will go on the side of the monarchical system if one had to uh, base it purely uh, on the evidence. But let's keep that aside for the time being and compare that par parliamentary system to the presidential system, basically to provide some different perspective from what uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Jimogobia, uh, put on the table. He gave us a list of correlations. There are more corrupt presidential systems. There are better human uh, factors in the parliamentary system. But that doesn't tell us why those things happened. He's suggesting that maybe it's because of the system of governance. It may be due to something entirely different. Maybe their economic history, uh, maybe their human capital formation. We don't know uh, really why in fact we should put those uh, things uh, side by side the way he has done, done. But what we do know and uh, I think rightly so, as uh, Professor Shoenka uh, suggested, the presidential system can be costly, can be corrupt in many, uh, particularly in the Nigerian context. And based on this, one might even be willing to look at the argument that it is maybe bad for Nigeria. But then, what is the problem? We cannot begin to advance solutions and deliver medicine without getting to the root of the problem. Is it the system that is wrong or is it the people who are operating it? Is the same presidential system that has built the United States of America. I suggest that in Nigeria, we are dealing with the depravities of a political class 
rather than the deficiencies of a political system. When you look at the history of this country in terms of the parliamentary system in the 60s and the presidential system today, all the problems we have today were there before. The only difference is that the scale is different. We now have oil. In the 60s, Professor Shoenka had to take a gun to a radio station just to complain the iniquities that were going on then to show you that, in fact, nothing has really changed much. But oil, <laughs> oil in many ways, <laughs> oil has made us the situation worse. We are dealing with a group of, a political class that is out, out of control, be it under the parliamentary or under the presidential system. Within this context of this political class, what we are being asked to do effectively, and I'll stop here, is that we are being asked to take the powers we've given to President Jonathan, David Mack, and Aminu Tambawal, put them all together and hand them over to one person. Even as they are now separate as they are, they are dangerous enough. It will be suicidal if we went the parliamentary way and collapse our executive. <laughs> I, I rest my case. <laughs> We've had arguments for and against. Um, will it be this? Will it be that? We've actually tested both systems, um, as has been pointed out. Uh, and it's clear, as discussions have said, that the problem is not with the system, but with the people. This is why I would like to focus on those people. Those people who, gifted with otherworldly levels of inventiveness, can make anything of any system. A country that under a presidential system invents constituency allowances for legislators and allows governors to dismiss speakers will under a parliamentary system invent fixed terms of office as a doctrine of necessity. So any system that will best serve Nigeria would have to focus less on the procedural and more on the personal, less on process and more on people. Those people are Nigerians. 75% of those people are below the age of 35, 50% below 18. The system of, govern of governance they, they know best is a quasi-parliamentary one, the democracy of social media, a parliament to which admission is not dependent on picking up expensive nomination forms or bowing to illiterate godfathers. In that parliament, which of course extends from text messaging to uploadable videos. A generation is mastering the art of and confidence of speaking for themselves after decades of near total exclusion from any genuine involvement in the affairs of the state. Perhaps that will be the future of democracy, that people's parliament that sometimes somehow manages to exert Im immense pressure on politics. And of course, we've heard our president uh, describe himself as the most abused in the world. We've heard the Senate president call for a ban uh, on social media. Perhaps the system of governance for the future is that one that best includes uh, the maximum number of people. The biggest argument against it is that it's an open, unregulated space. It's a, it's a jungle. But as far as I know, I don't see the social media jungle as being anything worse than the jungle we sometimes see in Abuja when chairs and tables get thrown in the National Assembly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, panel and the audience. In September of 2013, mostly young Nigerians protested at the National Assembly for five reasons. <clears throat> Account of the one trillion naira they had received in 10 years. A breakdown of their annual budget of 150 billion yearly. Lack of contact information. An attendance register, as, as I'm sure most of you know, if you watch video coverage, half the time the Senate is empty, the House of Representatives. So you really wonder who's attending and who's making laws. And the fifth point was uh, an account of the constitutional amendment process. <clears throat> uh, three senators came out 
and they did promise a debate and dialogue on the allocations. We're still waiting for them to set up a time or agree to a meeting for that. The website that the senator gave about information, contact information for the Senate did not exist. Someone else has gone ahead to register the website on their behalf. The attendance register, they claim we need to send them a freedom of information request for every time there's a session to get an attendance register when they could easily make it easily available to the public online. And then lastly, the account of the constitutional votes, they have actually responded to that. Their strongest response was that we were focused on only 2% of the budget and we should focus on the executive. But we found that very interesting because if the legislators are unwilling to account for their own budget, how will they keep oversight over the executive? Nigerians vote for seven positions when we go to the polls. We vote for a president, we vote for a senator, we vote for a House of Rep member, we vote for governors, we vote for state House of Assembly members, a local government chairman, and a local government councillor. As Tolu said, social media has given a rise to citizens to be more vocal. Um, the protest in September, a lot of people said, oh, that was quite interesting that you guys did that. But most people wondered why. Why would you challenge a senator? Why would you ask a senator a question? So beyond really the system of government, for us really, it's really about citizens understanding the power that each system of government inherently provides. Yes, the parliamentary might be cheaper. Yes, it might be easier in terms of the party wants to stay in power, so they put their best foot forward. After maybe the willing and dealing will start, maybe after six months of changing themselves, they'll get tired and then settle to the business at hand. But really fundamentally for Nigeria in 2014, it's really not an issue of the system of government. It's really an issue of the followers. How are the followers engaging whatever system it is? How are we holding our leaders accountable? Senators, House of Rep members who find it offensive for you to ask them a question about their constituency allowance, where their offices are, what their phone numbers are, how is that representative? And would that really change if it was a parliamentary system of government? So for our position, it's, it's uh, or for my position, I would say, I'm not speaking for any constituency in that sense. But for the work that we're trying to do in getting more Nigerians, especially young people, Tolu gave the stats, 75% under 30, 70% between 18 and 35. You have a national conference happening in Abuja of 492 delegates. You have 18 who are technically young people, though it's been said that only six of them are below 35. So for a nation who truly wants to develop and truly wants to move forward, citizens need to become extremely engaged and more interested in who it is that represents them. Parliamentary or presidential, you're voting for someone. Someone is quoting your vote. Someone is coming to you to make, to make promises of what they will do on your behalf. And after they've done that, then what? We just watch them and say, okay, we wait for our turn. Because it's not just about the government, it's also about the citizens and how they understand the Commonwealth, which is for all Nigerians and not just for a select few. Thank you. I think Nigeria will be better served by strengthening the form of government we have already. We've talked about the followership not following properly and those who have been elected not leading properly. But what is certainly true is that over the period of our modern history, we have failed to strengthen the institutions of democracy. We need to have a judiciary that's strong and incorruptible. It's an essential part of any system of government. We need to have a police force to be able to enforce the laws and policemen that are happy to do so because they believe that that is the proper thing to be doing. We need journalists and members of the fourth estate of the realm, I think they're called, a press that is strong and that questions what government does and reports it properly to the population. 
until we strengthen those institutions, it doesn't matter what system of government we have, whether parliamentary, presidential, monarchical, they're all of them in various ways work in various communities and countries around the world. We could actually go back to debating sitting under trees and letting traditional rulers settle disputes and quarrels amongst us. And I'm sure we could make progress. But without even those traditional rulers having not just surveillance, as has been suggested, but a police force and way of arbitration of disputes and, and sanctioning people to prevent them from committing crimes, you can't move any further forward. So I submit that Nigeria is better served not just by a parliamentary system of governments, but by the system that we have at the moment and continuing to work at it and strengthen it so that it serves the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. Thank you. I thank you all very much, um, distinguished panelists. My name is Abiola Tilegado. I'm a physician by training. I think um, both sides have advanced real and genuine causes for choosing either or. My issue really is we cannot get away from examining the economics of governance. What we're presently operating is too expensive for this country. It seems to me that on a ratio basis, there are a lot more people governing than those that are being governed. We need to address that. We need, I agree with the, what the last speaker said, we need to revisit certain critical values. Fundamental human rights are fundamental. And we must make sure that whatever guys people want to hide under, under, we must all be able to come out and say no. That a child is a child until she is over the age of 18. We must be able to say no, that a woman is a partner, not your... Your what? We must be able to say no to the fact that our children have to be withdrawn from school because any country that cannot develop its human and social capital can just sit back and let others take their turn. I don't care, but I think the parliamentary system probably does give more room to regular accountability than the presidential system. How many Nigerians have even heard Prof uh, uh, Professor Goodluck Jonathan talk? How many of them can come up and ask David Mark, why are you passing these laws? But if there is a parliamentary system on a weekly basis, or even on a monthly basis, they will be able to hear challenges from his counterparts about their cause. I would lean towards that system. Thank you. Uh, my, my focus is really on the human cost. Um, to a large extent, the, the point that was echoed by the, by the young lady earlier. The system that we pursue as a, as a nation is not of that greater uh, import uh, when, when compared with the consequences of what is going on uh, in Nigeria. I think everybody is really up in arms now. We only have to look down the road at the petrol queues from outside the gates of this um, establishment to follow more roundabout. And I think that's a microcosm of, um, of, of, of the problems that one is dealing with in Nigeria today. And I think to a very large extent, Nigerians are incensed by the inability or at least a seeming inability for people to take responsibility for their, for their actions. Because if it's clear that a particular individual is responsible for things not working 
and and, I, and I'm just talking very broadly here, not not even not even uh, talking about the the petrol situation. But any any system that does not shine the spotlight on particular individuals, whereby when they get to a certain point, when they do not uh, uh, live up to the billing, they have to they, 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 they fall on their sword and move over and let somebody else take over. They have to be pushed onto that sword. So so I think that um, the, the the system that that we uh, adopt going forward uh, should probably or could probably be some sort of hybrid. If we decide that we're going to stick with the parliamentary system, it should be some sort of hybrid of a, of, oh, sorry, if we're going to stick with the presidential system, it should be some sort of hybrid of a, a parliamentary system and a presidential one where, that, where there are regular uh, uh, interactions with key uh, uh, public officials who actually come out at regular televised town hall meetings and actually say what they're doing and put their reputations on the line, put their arguments on the line and allow superior uh, arguments to perhaps dictate uh, and determine what they do. Otherwise, I think we're, 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 we're in for, um, for, for a lot more trouble than we're seeing now because every step of the way, there are millions of lives and livelihoods that are, that are, that are, that are at risk. Thank you. Can I suggest that a major problem that we have um, in our nation is the quality of leadership? Um, you know, we've all heard that whatever the system is, it's about the people. Um, that w one thing that occurs to me every time I attend um, meetings like this is that we all come, we have our say, and we retreat to our, to our zones. Um, we return always to a nation, to communities that are governed by lesser minds. Now, forgive me when I say lesser minds, because in truth, we're all quality minds, and everyone has a right to their, to their voice in, in the public space. But for, for so long as we're governed by people who cannot understand basic concepts, I live in an area that was designated as a residential area. We have local government officials who have no concepts of zoning and have increasingly turned my neighborhood into a business territory because they can make money out of... Um, leasing out properties and leasing out spaces to, um, to entrepreneurs. For as long as you have people who have no concept of governance, who do not understand the needs of you and I, who have no concepts of rights, whether they be human, civil, business, or whatever it is, you and I will come to environments like this, who will engage in great and grand discussion, but will revert back to the same nation that we left before we came in here. Thank you. Will Nigeria be better served by a parliamentary system of government? We must look at this topic assumes that we have peculiarities and we are looking for a solution. Niger what are our peculiarities? We cannot organize election. Everybody is a despot. When a government is in power, everybody wants to identify with the government in power. Now, the very things we dread, the odious things we want to run away from, Parliamentary system of government, we secure them. We drag us deeper down the stormy waters. Why do I say so? Parliamentary system for a developing country like ours, Malaysia, similar places, does not address the issue of time limit. Now, Tafa Belewa ruled throughout the First Republic, and I can assure you that if we had continued continue till this day, virtually everybody would have gone to his party. And now that same mediocrity we fear will continue. So a system that cannot define time limits, where everybody will now be sending delegation, continue, you are good for us, you are good for us. And today we are so cowardly that we no longer have many young we're showing us that we go to a radio station and stop an announce, a fraudulent announcement. So that is my fear. We must reject parliamentary system. It cannot address the things that threaten us. Secondly, we do not have leaders that think about the people. Something happened in India recently. Sonia Gandhi, president of Congress party, her party came to power. But she knew her limitations. She could have been prime minister, but she stepped aside for a better person to lead India. 
in Nigeria, who is that party leader, even if it's a dead of, of uh, blessed memory, that will agree, garrison leader, that will agree that some other person will take over. So our liberty cannot be guaranteed by parliamentary system. Thank you. We, the young people in this country, I think it is way, way time that we stand up and do what we're supposed to do. We cannot keep complaining that the government is bad and nobody is actually making the move. We stop, we talk and talk and talk. Like he said, everybody will go home today and it's done. What are we doing tomorrow? What is going to happen tomorrow? Do we all sit down here, applaud Wally Shoinka, the beautiful panel of judges we have here, and say, you did a wonderful job. Tap on the shoulders and go home. That's where it ends. That is where it ends. Because nobody has the guts, the guts to stand up and say to a government that is pulling us down every day, what are you people doing? This is wrong. Stop. Who can, who can do that? We talk and there it stops. It is right time. I am okay now. Am I? Do I have the guts? Is there anybody that would go with me if I say, "Okay, let's go"? How many people will go? How many people? We we should be truthful. I am going to go home and stay with my children under the AC, buy fuel, buy diesel as much as I can, hoard it if possible, and say, "Please, oh, let me stay in my house. My children are home." Let me protect them. Because the people are stepping or not, they have crushed our spirits. The governance is nothing. You want parliamentary? Whatever. Who is going to be that person? Who will stand up to a government and say, enough. It is time. But it will not be one person. It cannot be one person. It has to be collective. We need to stand up. Thank you. Now, um, anything, any comment I make is within the Nigerian environment. Otherwise, parliamentarian system or presidential will work anywhere very well. But when you confine it to the Nigerian environment, it is a different ball game. Um, I associate parliamentary system with being trimmed, not pot bellied, and you are very okay. Whereas the people you govern are equally enjoying themselves. Whereas the presidential could be a fattening room. You become so fat that when you want to get out, you have to really die yet again to get back to the parliamentary system. And that is the operation now in Nigeria. It is unfortunate. But as I said, any of the two will work where people are willing to make it work. Uh, presidential uh, uh, is more of monetary, monetary corruption, whereas presidential is more of moral. And if you ask me which one I vote for, I, I think Nigeria should wage war against moral corruption than even monetary corruption. Thank you very much. I want to ask, and this one is for Professor Wale Shoenka. I want to ask you why or when you're going to run for president. <laughs> or better still, sir, when are you going to run? And I'm seconding um, what the young man there said. People who seem to know how to do this thing are not up there. Now, the other option is to maybe team up and groom young people like us, like that young man there and that lady there. Let's have godfathers in you. Over time, we will learn how to do this thing. I know being a politician doesn't take a day. But if you put, if you put heads together, whether publicly or privately, start to groom us. And maybe someday, someone like that man or that man there will be the president. Maybe one day, a 35-year-old will be the president again. And we will begin to reflect the things that we want this country to be. Thank you. 
I think the essence of life is when you are doing something, you learn from your past, you learn from your mistake. Then after learning from your mistake, then you come up with something that you think that would be better for you. Um, like in South Africa and in most parts of the world, where either presidential system or parliamentary system of government is being practiced. Most often times, they learn from what they've been practicing and from what they learn, they come up with a particular way that best suits them. Presidential uh, parliamentary system, the way it's being practiced in Britain is different from the way it's being practiced in South Africa. But they are both practicing parliamentary system of government in this, um, but in different ways. Just like in America too. In America, there's no Senate president in America, but in Nigeria, there's Senate president. The vice president is the head of the Senate in America. But when, here in Nigeria, we feel, okay, we want to have a Senate president. That's why we come up with Senate. So what I'm trying to say in essence is, we should not be particular about whether a system of government, this or that. We should be particular about a system that better suits us. And again, if we, after finding the, um, the system that, that better suits us, we should be particular about the person that rules. We should come up with a system that would determine the person that rules. Because it is very, very, very annoying when I have a president that does not know a little, anything at all about economics. That I'm so sorry that you should, you'll, be, you'll be so shocked when you see some of our parliamentarians, when you ask them, what is GDP? Some of them may not know. What is GDP or GDP? And what is the, you might even ask some of them, what is the difference between a, a nominal GDP and a PPP GDP? They cannot even tell you. And it's very annoying that such a person is ruling me. Now, and the greatest bit of, our, of, of democracy in this part of the world is when you say a school sat, school sat person, is, school sat is a standard that determines the person that becomes a president, where there are better qualified people all around Nigeria. Most Nigerians are schooling abroad. Most Nigerians are schooling in Nigeria, coming up with good grades, coming up with something. But you find out that most people, people like that, they can't become the president of Nigeria. So what I'm saying in essence is, we should come up with something like, a, like an institution that will determine people that will become the either the presidential system or any other system that will come up with. Thank you. I will now ask you to vote on the basis of the arguments you have heard presented both by the panelists and by those who intervened from the audience. So the first question is, will Nigeria be better served by a parliamentary system of government? Those who are in support of that, will you please raise your hands and uh, would help me c count them. Those in support, who will help me count them? Um, yes, Ikoku, yes. Um, please keep your hands up and <laughs> I said, those in support of parliamentary system should raise their hands. Right, thank you very much. Those in support of non-parliamentary system, which could be a presidential system or even a hybrid, please raise your hands.
Well, the um, teller tells me that 57 people are in support of the parliamentary system and 33 people are in support of non-parliamentary system. <laughs> So, I'd like to say at this point that um, um, my, my boss is demanding a recount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were voting for the other side. <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much for, for this participation. Your Excellency, our distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Richard Ajayi. I'm a member of St. John's Forum. And on behalf of St. John's Forum, we would like to thank you for all for being here today. I would like to thank our distinguished panelists who have all worked very hard to make this event a reality. We know that you are all very busy people with significant matters of state to attend to, and your presence here today reflects your passion and your interests in the public good. Thank you very much. This debate is the culmination of a whole series of activities, such as press interviews and all the media activities and our panelists have made themselves available to ensure that the debate got the required level of publicity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking our distinguished panel for all their hard work, commitment, and absolute support in making this debate a reality. It is always difficult to know the right time to hold such an event, and 11 a.m. on a Wednesday was always a risk. But we're very happy to have you all here today. And ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us this afternoon. Thank you very much. An event like this has many drivers behind the scene. A lot of people have contributed financially. All our media people have been working tirelessly to ensure the right level of publicity. Um, I would especially like to thank Newton and David who have supported us by decorating uh, the set. Um, our moderator, Chief Anyoko, has been very, very committed in advising us and making sure that we had a good debate. And I would like to thank all members of St. John's Forum for all the hard work that they've put in, in making today a reality. And last but not the least, our vicar at St. John's Anglican Church, the venerable N.N. Isidairo, for all his support and his advice. may be further asked, why, if indeed the matter concerns all Nigerians, are we in the forefront? There are two reasons for this. First, Nigerians tend to discuss personalities rather than issues. And secondly, when they do discuss issues, they do so from a purely sectional perspective. You will agree with me that an issue of such fundamental importance as a system of government best suited for Nigeria deserves the greatest possible consideration it can get. It is in furtherance of this that we at 